On hot and sunny afternoon in June, I sit comfortably on the balcony of my apartment in the gallery, overlooking the green oak and the I took a large sip of full Cardinal water. I opened a collection of short stories entitled Sunbolts, stories of solar punk and eco speculation. I started reading. In the uh, first and second stories I read, In the first and second stories I read, I immediately recognized the contemporary affectivity, the ecological melancholy, which is discussed in critical theory and psychoanalysis as the flip side of blissful ecological ignorance. Ecological melancholy can be defined very basically as mourning the loss of planet Earth or life on Earth. Now, this is a very puzzling form of mourning since Earth is still here and we are quite alive. Um, therefore, critics perceive it as an affectivity that results from the inability to act politically in a meaningful way and ecologically in a responsible manner. The ecological melancholy is obviously caught in the strange temporality of the present, co creating the lost object of Earth as already and irreversibly lost in the past when global warming started, as an object that is continuously and progressively being lost on the melting and burning existence of the contemporary environment, and as an object that will eventually become truly lost in the near future. These are the tropes I recognized uh, after reading the, the first two stories from the mentioned collection. The gloominess of solar punk stories uh, struck me as odd. Um, the descriptions of the solar punk genre and journalistic and scientific publications I read in the past did not seem to match the subject matter of the literature I was reading. As far as I knew, solar punk should be utopian, but I did not find these stories to be a utopian at all. After putting aside the preposterous consideration that my personal melancholy could sort of have influenced my reading, I decided to dwell on the question, why are these stories so gloomy? Um, solar punk, a contemporary ecological science fiction genre, fashions itself as positive, optimistic ecological genre, as a mirror rejection of dystopian cyberpunk from the past. Solar punk has been designated as a genre that is grounded in the political economy of degrowth and the critique of mystifying discourses of sustainability uh, in South America and as a genre influenced as well by contemporary social movements in the West. In the strict sense, the genre is utopian because it is fiction, but should its optimism not convey utopistics? as defined by Emmanuel Malstein, utopistics as serious assessments of historical possibilities, as serious assessments of alternative possible historical systems. After reading a few more stories, a familiar idea came to me, an idea uh, developed, an idea developed uh, in an influential essay, Progress versus Utopia, or can we imagine the future written by Frederick Jameson 30 years ago. Jameson argued that science fiction is a symptomatic response to the socio-historical antagonisms associated with light and fast technological progress. He argued that the idea of progress is not primarily reflected ideologically as a declarative belief or declarative statements, but through cultural narratives in which it forms their political unconscious. James's case in point was that although science fiction or sci-fi uh, is a cultural narrative of progress, plays with images of future, it seeks to reshape and adapt our experience of the present so that we become accustomed to expecting the unexpected and therefore to the 
cầu là gì? Sign uh, sign sign is supposedly merely meant to make us aware of the truth that we are incapable of imagining a better world. Given the influence of dystopian depictions of future in the sci-fi genre, the utopian, supposedly utopian version of Solipon, uh, I ask myself whether Solipon stories obviously is seeking to overcome what is called um, the things are the best as they are, capitalist realism, capable of imagining a utopian future. Or do these stories only depict I'm sorry, but it's a hallucinatory wishful thinking that is at work in dreams and daydreams. Of course, with this in mind, uh, I analyzed 11 short stories in the collection I mentioned earlier, and I explored uh, which so called writers of the apocalypse they represent, how they try to tackle them, uh, which alternatives they offer, if any. Uh, what is the role of eco-futuristic technology, uh, possibly and also possibly the essential element? How is the, the apocalypse linked with the uh, temporality of the narratives? Uh, these are the traces, only traces of my analysis and my findings. Uh, the stories in this collection uh, are fragmented and unfinished. Utopias that propose uh, mostly fantastic and possibly technologically uh, futuristic solutions to the scarcity of natural resources and um, in relation to the impending ecological apocalypse. Uh, and of course, as such, these stories confront, uh, interrogate the writers of uh, modern apocalypse in uh, multi layered ways. Uh, the ecological crisis, of course, is a fundamental theme of solar pump, but the given stories do not necessarily offer a holistic utopian uh, proposals that would reach beyond the extraordinary potential of, of course, solar cells, uh, which gave partially solar pump its name. Uh, solar pump is a genre, I found out, affirms and rejects the biogenetic revolution but eco-futurist technology often does not create a better world with a more fair distribution of natural resources. Uh, instead, technology merely saves or preserves the remnants of the old world. Uh, the technology in solar park is fantastic, imaginative, also socially responsible, but eco-futurist mainly to prevent an apocalyptic end. Uh, one charge that can be leveled against solar pump is that social stratification uh, in the genre is often mystified by the technology itself. The optimistic solar imaginaries are determined by forgetting or concealing uncomfortable realities. That is, paradoxically, even in representations of fictional, ecologically advanced worlds, solar technologies obscure the sources of their production and can function as metaphorically or mystifyingly as real modern technological devices that fascinate us on the one hand while obscuring their barbaric origins on the other hand, as of course in the, for example, paradigmatically example of smartphones or their fake platforms. Depictions of fantastic eco futurist technologies are hardly enough for the genre to be utopian or to present uh, statistics or serious assessments of alternative uh, social order. Aside from the depiction of ecological and futuristic technologies in most of these stories, uh, progress and more just world order are depicted through individual actions of Good Samaritans who are in the process of either saving planet Earth or leaving planet Earth. Period, of course, is ecologically monopolic subjects uh, that are struggling with the loss of planet Earth. Um, there are traces of communitarian efforts, but for these stories to appear as convincing representations of utopistic degrowth, uh, technology should play a more non-justifying role, I think. Uh, although the original, the Brazilian, 
and South American solar architecture is rooted uh, in deep growth ideas. The economic dimension in the mentioned stories as a representation of more Western solar uh, versions of the genre is mainly replaced by the ecological dimension. Uh, disregarding class relations, social conflicts as commentaries of the present, which the stories are. Uh, more contemporary dimensions of our stories seem to isolate the possibility of ecological catastrophe as the central motif by turning to advanced uh, ecofuturistic technology as sort of a redemptive fetish that blurs a more profound understanding of how the world functions. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay. Uh, in this line of thought, in the world of solar punk, uh, contemporary social antagonisms are mostly fantastically displaced, but by no means eliminated. Um, solar punk does not appear as something completely new, but, but sort of as an ecological or climatic cyberpunk still, I think, very dystopian, um, which only in fleeting fragments succeeds in interrogating one of the most problems, uh, one of the most important problems of the Western imagination, I think, of uh, the idea of a uh, utopistic utopia uh, without uh, the apocalypse. Um, most of these stories are uh, set amidst the struggle for ecological harmony in a time of transition to a supposedly utopian society, which never occurred. Uh, of course, marked by this strange and impossible duration uh, which is the apocalypse itself. Uh, although these small um, guerrilla groups and good hearted uh, renegades uh, attempt to save the world through individual acts of bravery and disobedience, uh, the genre really remains trapped uh, spatially and temporarily in the transition between carbon and carbon free societies, where all contemporary social antagonisms only intensify. Um, and about the apocalypse, uh, Strange temporality in which the genre is caught. Uh, the apocalypse in these stories has happened, is happening, and will happen again. And that's only one story from them. Uh, life in the post apocalyptic world, so to speak, uh, is often just an anxious continuation of life in anticipation of a new apocalypse. Uh, the social transition into a utopian world is an imaginary boundary inscribed in the character or nature of the end in solar punk as a boundary between the earthly and the cosmic, between present and the future. Um, and of course, the impossibility of imagining the end of human life and the reoccurring representation of a world that ends but cannot possibly end uh, are the flip sides, of course, of the impossibility of imagining a utopian world. Um, in a few stories, the end has the character of temporality, which is one of the dominant features of the conservative politics of the end of the 20th century, to lead, of course, uh, here on the work of uh, Alenka Spanjic. The inability of solar punk literature to comprehensively imagine a positive ecological future also shows, I think, that environmental problems cannot be seen as democratic problems, also, but also as problems of imagination, um, cannot be seen as democratic problems, but problems uh, that can be solved by green capitalism or sustainable capitalism. Um, the technology, as said, in some of the stories provides uh, silhouettes of eco-futurist uh, promises. Um, so it seems uh, that not even in speculative literature, uh, not even speculative literature can dismantle social, social injustice. Um, and I think that in dialectical terms, the stories discussed are not hopeless enough if they want to be optimist, optimistic, because they presuppose an infinite, an infinite ending of, or multiple endings uh, with multiple disappointing uh, apocalyptic uh, sequels. Uh, in this sense, the substance of the character, the nature of solar punk seems to be transcendental and theological. Uh, and while this charming struggle for linear transcendence seems utopian, it is, I think, nevertheless dystopian 
in terms of the narrative structure of the theme. Um, after the end of the world, as this is this is where often these stories start. Uh, after the end of the world, a sort of hell replaces heaven and earth, and heaven is often projected into some distant universe or alternative physical realities. Uh, so narratively, the stories, not one stories, are still set in different periods of linear development, or in this case, decay of the world. Um, and here the reader is given the authority to look into possible futures um, and use these stories sort of as warnings of what will happen when the apocalypse starts. Um, I think that if solar bombs become becomes truly realistic, uh, the idea of progress and some transcendental reality must be forgotten. What has to be conveyed to the reader is a purely godless awareness of the possibility of an absolute end of human life on Earth, which is not supplemented by any transhumanist or post-humanist political desires for life on other universes or states. In his book, What Life is Worth Living For, the Austrian philosopher Robert Fahler quotes Bertolt Brecht's, uh, Bertolt Brecht's uh, poem, Resolution of the Common Arts, to demonstrate that people become enslaved when they are more afraid of death than life unworthy of living. Now, to reiterate uh, Father's Brecht, uh, solar pump, I think, can become utopistic and can provide better attempts to knock the riders of the apocalypse off their saddles. When it stops portraying ecofuturistic technology as the last straw that saves the world from an impending catastrophe, and starts imagining the fictional scenarios of how the ecofuturist technology can collectively improve human life for its own sake and not in relation to the apocalypse. In this sense, the trope of capitalist, capitalist realism can be substituted by ecofuturist sci fi social realism, which I think seems to be on the original agenda of solar park as a genre of ecological utopias. Uh, this is the case uh, in one uh, there are a couple of, uh, couple of uh, sh sh shattering fragments of, of this story written on these slides. Um, okay, that's another thing. This, I think this is the case uh, where uh, capitalist realism is uh, substituted by uh, eco-futurist sci-fi social realism, which I think is the original of Bruno Solipan. Um, in one, one of the stories uh, from this collection, I read and made possible this is the only one. Um, and it's, it's titled The Boston Art Project. The story takes place in a climate change dystopian city troubled by uh, icy winters, uh, leaving many homeless people to die in chair. And in order to save their lives, a group of activists illegally occupies a luxurious new hotel built for the uh, super rich or mega rich and turns it into a homeless shelter. With the help of local volunteers, social media, and national campaigns uh, encouraging similar actions in other American cities, the activists are only able to hold the occupation of this luxurious building for 49 days. However, people without homes who would otherwise freeze on the icy streets of Boston survive the winter, and in that period of survival, they live lives worth living. 